shot. Deb Lee pulls that down ever so casual as you like. That's deadly. First score of the game. Lethal. So my name's Kylie O'Brien. I'm here with Dan Clinton. Good day, Dan. Good afternoon, Kylie. And uh, yeah, what a quick start to the game. So this is the first time these two teams have met this season. We've mentioned previously that uh, Chaos uh, yet to come over um, and play in any of the tournaments uh, on the, the east side of, this, of the city. And part of the reason for that is that they're heading off to World Ultimate Club Championships in Cincinnati uh, later in the year. And so obviously a lot of expenses associated with that campaign. Um, and they're trying to conserve all of their, their cash for that. So this has been a fantastic runaround for them this tournament and, and they find themselves now against a bit of an old rival in uh, in Rogue Passion. These guys have had some great tussles over the years, so I'm looking forward to another one today. And I am expecting fireworks. I have my sunglasses on. I have my fireproof pants because I am anticipating action. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be disappointed, Dan. I, ne I didn't... I, I think it's just a bit of a... a it's, it's not, this game is just not going to be boring. There's no way that Chaos v Road Passion can be boring. No, that's right. And we see the disc with Lim and straight away turnover. Pretty much in the middle of the field. And that's pretty good for Road Passion. Yeah, we see Rock walking over to the disc. Second year player with Rogue, previously from Queensland. Great grab from Ewan. She moves it across. Oh, that's a great effort there. That's a hat block. That's a great effort there from Lim to get in the way. We see. Quinn. Quinn with the disc. Taylor just not able to grab onto that. Rogue want to move it quickly. Sarah Perkins, captain of the Rogue team, grabs it in the field, middle of the field, holds it up. She's looking for Geo. Slide overthrow there. I think we're going to see a bit of that. The wind has really picked up since this morning. Couple of quick turns in this point. Lim again with the disc to win. Oh, big bid from Bella C. Just misses. Chaos take advantage of it. See so Callahan now looking for win. A oh! little bit too high there, and Perkins makes sure of it. Both. Perkins and Wynn bidding out of bounds. Oh, I'm getting comfy. I'm getting comfy. This is going to be a great game. Rock again brings the disc in. This is a tricky corner to play from. She's looking in field. Oh, Gallahan! It's unbelievable! Gallahan! It is amazing! It's a Gallahan on the second point of the game. A layout, Callahan, of all things. Amazing layout defense. Oh, you won't see better. Wow. And if you want something that's going to fire your team up early in the game, I don't think you're going to see anything better than that from Alicia Lim. That is incredible. Oh, she just, she commits. She goes so early. She, she feels it coming, leaves her feet and catches the block. Oh, wow. they have found the leprechaun at the end of the rainbow there. They have pinched his pot of gold. They have gone to the store, bought a unicorn, and then rode that unicorn out to a 2-0 lead. Yes, they have, Dad. <laughs> All right, how are we going to get through the rest of this game now? Using up our energy levels nice and early. But look, Lim, I think she set the tone early in that point. That was not her first her first bid in that point. She was pretty involved, and that is really going to be a great lifter for Chaos to level it as we see them. It was a good pull down here. Well, that Vladimir was actually, Mardos picking up the disc. It makes it one all. It does. <laughs> it's Chung not even a disc. break. Chung with the disc hits Latimados back into the middle. They'll be is the width of the field here, Rogue. Bub with disc in hand. First year player with Rogue. Zalems. Oh, Chung. Just naffles that up and she looks for it now. As we see Boyle running. Oh, Boyle! 
She's going to call a foul. There was contact on the play. Thought she might have had a second go at that. She bobbled it up nicely for herself. Epstein gesturing. Boyle, I think from what I can see, it looks like Epstein might have reached out and grabbed her on the arm as they, uh, as they went. Yes, Epstein's arm, her left arm is on Boyle's. Well, with the turnover stand, they've obviously had a discussion there. And Epstein and Boyle, former teammates. Epstein, previously a road player, playing with the Chaos team this year at World Clubs. As we see Murray Yong with the disc in hand. Jung ve uh, Chung very active on the mark. Brereton, lovely grab. She sees the disc well to Sarah Brereton. She's going to be a steady influence. She's indicating what she wants from her cutters. She wanted to set up for that inside throw to DeLuca. Puts it up to Rice. Ruiz very close there on the D. Rice looking back inside again. She wants Brereton. They're really punching through that IO break. You can see what Chaos want. They're trying to set up their cuts for that. DeLuca loops it high. And there we have Rigby. MJ Rigby. She said, that looks like it's going to float over the head. I'm going to pick up the scraps there. And she's read it well. And just like that, Chaos are up 2-1. And with the application of the aero start onto the engine of Chaos for their O-point conversion last time. Now they... Um, ...connections here between these uh, Rogue and, and Chaos teams. Uh, we see Sarah Brereton... Uh, who was one of the assistant coaches for the Stingrays under-24s team on the field there. Um, and her, the other assistant coach for the Stingrays team is uh, Brie Edgar, who's currently coaching the Rogue team. So those two have gone from um, friends to foes in a very short period of time, both with a lot of, um, a lot of coaching credit there, both very astute strategic thinkers of the game. So it'll be fascinating to see how it plays out. But you can see already that Chaos are really looking for that IO forehand break just to bring the disc back in field and, and open up those angles of attack. And I think they'll probably persist in that and that's something that Coach Edgar, I'm sure, will want to shut down pretty quickly. Something else that was mentioned by Rogue when I went, ahead, went and had a quick talk with them was the identification of Chaos liking the long game, the liking throwing that deep throw receivers moving away from the disc rather than towards and that is what we saw in that point I don't think DeLuca was perfectly happy with the throw that she made but it worked out in the end chaos the much taller team here yeah. today yeah and I think that's going to be an interesting one in the in the wind norm traditionally rogue has had has fielded some pretty tall teams but we see Rachel Parsons not playing. Uh, Rachel Parsons, uh, also known as Snips, uh, recent Sydney Suns addition for the AUL, sitting out this season so that she can get some of her injuries right and play uh, with the Frisky Club at World Ultimate Club Championships. And she's got some height. And Lauren Bowman, who was here yesterday, unable to play today, also losing a little bit of height there. So Chaos have definitely got the height on Rogue, and that could prove a factor in the wind. You see Bella C picking up the disc to Rock, to Ewan. Some of the experienced players there out to Perkins. Perkins is looking for Rock up the line. And again, we see nice pickup from Ewan. Hold on, we've got a, we've got a problem here. That's going to come back. Yeah, heavy contact on the play. Got an injury call. Two Chaos players coming together. She's even lost her shoe. The contact was so heavy, that's Lauren Hoskins. She doesn't look very well at all. She'll be placed by Rice. Hopefully she's okay. Well, look, I think Rogue will count themselves lucky there that they had Ewan backing up that throw that just caught the lip of the wind. Oh, it sailed over the head of Rock and both the Chaos defenders. Ewan with the disc, she's going to tap it in. Big fake. Puts it out for Rock. Oh, massive bid there from Rosa Wang. Not able to put it in. Hands of Dorp. She's looking early. She shoots. Oh. 
Rogue moves it quickly. Great grab from Rosa Wang. Lefty. Pops it down to Bella C. She looks down the line now, looking back in field. Miranda Lan. Lamb sees Perkins coming. She wants to hit her, but again, that wind just playing a bit of havoc there. You're gonna need to make some adjustments to these throws. Well, they're not the only ones. Yeah. Let's see. Chen just putting the shot out straight away and giving Rogue the disc back, but they're not finding it easy moving it up the field at the moment, and I think Everything looks a little bit frenzied from both teams. I think we'd probably like to see them just settle into the game a little bit more. And it'll be up to the experienced players, the world's representatives, players like uh, Geo Rock, who would need to settle their team here. Bella C. Oh, grabs that out of traffic. Rice did well to avoid the contact there. What bravery from C. And then we see this one sitting up. Well grabbed, well grabbed by Rosa Wang. Oh, Bella C, she saw nothing coming and she didn't care. Just with pure bravery going up, she was vulnerable, yeah. made the play for her team. And they go upwind, do rogue. Yeah, and we've oh, seen boy. that a lot throughout the whole tournament with this wind just providing enough impact that it's gonna sit up for a little bit longer. Those bids in that lane, that upwind cut. We've seen plenty of turnovers coming there, but I think overall we've seen a really great effort at avoiding contact there with the, the player cutting up the line usually being having no vision and the player coming in being the one that's got the best perspective there. And we saw then Rice wanting to get in there and be competitive, but realizing that she's gonna initiate the contact if she didn't pull out, so. Which is against the rules. So well done, both players there. I think in terms of the conditions, with the wind, as we said, has picked up a little bit. The end that Rogue is pulling from at the moment would be the, the easier end to, to gain some distance. Still a little bit of crosswind coming towards us on the commentary side of the field here. But I think Rogue would be very happy to get that almost an upwinder I'd, I'd call it not that it's a, a big strong up down at the moment just more of a throws breeze yeah but i think it they definitely give them a little bit of confidence and hopefully they can start to play into their game a little bit more Minescu with the pull looks like it's going to stay in well caught by brereton off to deluca out to taylor using the width of the field well here now Rogue start to close the defense. Murray Yong, Brereton into that power position, but well positioned there by Zalams. Didn't quite have enough on it, dropping pretty quickly in the breeze. We see Kath O'Neill, one of the captains of the Rogue team, striding in here. Good defense from Chaos, not seeing a lot. High stall. And then she's just done pretty much what she needs to do in that situation. Murray Yong, aware that it's coming. Brereton quickly picks up the disc. Looks inside, is she gonna look for that inside out flick again? No, she just goes down line and less success with that option. Rigby caught a face full of knuckles there. She wiped the blood away and kept running. Typical Rigby there, she's, she's tough, that's for sure. Bub with the disc on the sideline. Really working in a small space here, Rogue. Middle, 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 middle. Ruiz looking to put it out wide. Oh, oh big contact. That is big contact. Humongous contact there. Taylor gets sandwiched. I'm not sure how that happened. Zalams looks dusted up. Taylor went flying. And the players are just trying to work out what happened. Yeah. I, I don't know how that happened. Because it looked like Taylor and Zalams were on completely different tracks, heading in different directions. We'll have yeah, another eyes for the disc from everybody there, really. And then oh, just, it was oh. the contact from, from Bella C. Yeah. Knocking Taylor into Zalams.
We will correct the score momentarily. Two all is the score. As this call gets resolved. You see a different angle. Yeah, Zalem's going backwards. The contest between C and Taylor, the contact there, knocking Taylor sideways and I'm not, wiping I'm not out. I'm sure that the contact was initiated by C, though, I think. It might have been Taylor going away Taylor from Taylor was it. coming in through the, the space. I mean, everyone had eyes on the disc, which is what you want to see. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? It's ended in an absolute car crash. Looks like... We might be coming back to Ruiz on the sideline. I think that's... Yeah, it looks I think to be an uncontested receiving foul. So, yeah, an uncontested receiving foul. I think that's the right play. I, I think Taylor, there's no blaming her for getting into that position, but I do think it was uh, the wrong position to be in. Looks like she's a little bit sore from that collision, so well, hopefully that doesn't impact her at all. It was a big hit. Marion taps it back in. Ruiz there hits Perkins, who just looks straight away for O'Neill. She's quick, she's quick, but she can't reel that in. And once again, we see that overshoot on this slightly downwind side. We've seen it all weekend. Shots from both in the men's and women's division just a couple of metres past that. Uh, so easy to overthrow in that direction. And tricky to do. Yep. Narrow, strong side of the field, leading receiver. Same channel of the field, yep. So Brereton will bring this back in for chaos. She gets it to, to Luca who pops up a big fat side throw. That has got plenty of air and that is a hospital pass, but picked up nicely. Picked up nicely by Smith. Cross now to DeLuca. Smith probably they're looking for They're looking for that channel again. Wow. Brereton takes that just outside the end zone. They're gonna squeeze that space or are they gonna bring it back in field? No, great throw and that makes it look easy. From through the outstretched beard of O'Neill, when they're able to bring it back in field, both teams, and get out of that narrow space down the sideline, they both just look a lot when, better for it. Yeah, when they're able to create that width. Yeah, I know it, what you're saying, Dan. It just looks so much better. Creates a different angle and uh, gives them a better look at their receivers, able to find a better pass. Rigby, experienced play. Immediately as she catches the disc, looks to the far side, looks to again exploit the width of the field. So chaos break for a 3-2 scoreline. And I think we saw with, with the rogue offense then, chaos were doing a great job at containing them on this side of the field. Really not giving them too many other options to throw to. And we saw that one that went in field, big collision there, but then after that only able to keep it on the sideline. And I think in return, Rogue seemed like they were able to shut down that inside flick channel. But just the patience of chaos to get it back into the middle of the field and then they make it look easy. So in terms of results for this tournament so far, we've seen um, some interesting ones. Uh, Rogue had a couple of losses. Big loss to Ellipsis, 15-4, 4-15, and a close loss to Zig Theory, 9-11. Zig Theory playing on the other field right now against Factory. As we see Huin put the disc up, caught by Chung. Oh, this, this is trouble. Big trouble. And Daub says, thanks, I'll take that. Now Chaos with great field position, back with win. Low throw, but just straight into the turf. No wasted time from Geo Rock. She finds Jess Jones on the other sideline of the field, and now they're going to bring it back into the middle through Ewan. She hits Lamb and grabs that one, and again, they're just wrong footing each other. The road girls, the disc is not going further en enough in front of them. We see Huin with the disc again. Big mark from Perkins. 
She goes around and breaks her. That's a lovely grab there by Singh. Back into the middle. Returns it. They're on this sideline, but the break again. Epstein, she'll be happy with that. Getting a score on her old team. and a boost of confidence and they're sort of riding that wave at the moment and it's up to Rogue to really try and change that momentum. They've got a good shot now with a shorter pull. We see that rolling out to the sideline. We'll see where Latimatos takes it from the sideline or brings it back in for a brick. Looks like she's going to play from the sideline. She moves it across to O'Neill. Uncharacteristic drop from O'Neill and that is not the place on the field that you want to be giving Chaos possession. Well, this is another short field. And Chaos go out of the vertical. The throw's going to pop, though. And oh, the contest. Oh, Bub. She needed to make that D. As won by the, the not-so-tall Bub. Oh, the just pops in the wind, though. And what looked like a rudimentary swing pass has resulted in a turn. And an even better field position for Chaos now as Brereton strides in. They're a long way towards the sideline though. Only half the field to throw into. Yeah, Quire with the disc. Back to Brereton. Oh, big effort by Boyle, but no result. And as then we see Brereton with a bit of a free run. Boyle able to recover. Rigby. Again, they just keep looking to push it back into the middle, which I think is the right plan, but that one just overshoots Quar and Rogue find themselves with another opportunity. Oh, Kath O'Neill is going to play for position. Looks for the 60-40. Yeah, look, playing for position, and I think if she's just able to hold that up for a second or two longer, that becomes a much more viable throw. A couple of extra pivots in there. She had... She had uh, cutters with separation. They just hadn't really been able to get full steam into their cuts. Saw so Valancourt heading back there. And now they're going to ask Chaos to work it up the field. Quire with the disc. To Brereton. Back to Quire, little give go. High release there to Rice, but I think we have a, a pick. Zalams and Bub. Thank goodness they got different hairstyles today because I was getting them mixed up on a previous call. And Bub is uh, her last name, not her nickname. Correct. She's playing some pretty great D there on Rice, and Rice does well to grab that. That's a strong hold. Wearing her like a cheap sweater. Moves it back into the middle. Brereton again. Valancourt really wants to stop that throw into the middle. There's that inside throw again to Rice. Brereton. Grasser to Callahan. Terminating the offense. They're all yep. away and it just, she needed to take a breath there. Valancourt. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, it's caught. Picked up, by, picked up by Barb. That's incredible. Rogue needed that little bit of fortune there. With the D earlier. And that massive pickup, Bub is doing her part. Unfortunately, the Lata rest. Mardos is making Valancourt work on this side of the field. Yeah, and a timeout is going to be called by Brereton. So it's 4 2 to Chaos. They're going to take a break, have a chat. I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of comments around mid game, uh, sorry, midpoint timeouts. Oh, there's some stats. I love this one, though. And the reason for that is that this is a huge point for Chaos. If they can get another essentially upwinder at this point, take it out to 5-2. And a break. They, uh, they go a long way towards establishing dominance in this game, and they've had a couple of opportunities where they've been in similar sort of field positions, almost on the halfway line. They haven't been able to ice it. A lot of the girls take, sucking in some big breaths there, looking like 
they need a little bit of a, a rest. And I think that's just a seasoned move from Brereton there to say, right, let's just calm it down. Let's give ourselves another opportunity with half field. I like it. Well, there you go. That is the, the definitive answer from one of the legends of the game, Kylie O'Brien. 19 years in a row at Nationals. Joy Lee, reigning champion though. Yeah. On we saw Joy. Con con consecutive Nationals. Play earlier this morning. She unfortunately is uh, playing off for last place, which I don't think anyone would have predicted. No, but there's a lot of exciting games going on at the moment. As we said, we've got Zig Theory and Factory playing on the field behind us. Cup, uh, GWS um, is over playing against the New Zealand team. Chicha Chicks. And we've got Ellipsis facing off against Fuse. So plenty of excellent women's frisbee going on at the moment in this time slot. And if there's any team that could potentially knock off Ellipsis early, it'd have to be the Fuse. They looked exceedingly athletic against uh, Bauhaus earlier today. But they'll have to pull out something special to beat Ellipsis. Yeah, and Rogue is really putting on a smothering defense here. And that is what they needed to do. That, that, that is what they needed to do because I know I talked about the timeout in that position. And obviously there's been a turn now, so the stats will remain anecdotally as they were. <laughs> but that is all about Rogue's defense then. It's the first time I've really felt they've put some massive pressure on. Lovely throw from Valancourt. Yes, Deb Lee reels that in. For me, that's the best passage of play that we've seen from Rogue this game so far. Defensive pressure, smothering team defensive pressure, and then just some really patient, pretty offense. And Valancourt lays it out there, serves it on a silver platter. That is lovely touch from Valancourt. Gets down nice and low. We've, We've seen so many overthrowed to that direction. Valancourt, no worries, too easy. Let's give me something hard, she says. Throws to the advantage of Lee, but Lee not even at full pace, they're able to run onto it with good separation. That's a confidence builder for Rogue. They needed that one. Oh, big time. And now they've got an opportunity. After all that action in that point, they have weathered the storm, withheld, held strong in the pressure. And if they could break chaos here, it is well and truly game on. Absolutely. And you'd fancy uh, Rogue Passion maybe to break again should they uh, convert this point and take a lead for the first time in the game. They can keep that defensive pressure where it was after that timeout. I don't know what Coach Edgar said to them in that timeout, but they just came out with yeah. an intensity that we have not seen thus far in the game. It's like that uncle that insists on giving you a hug and then won't let go and he's just kind of all up in your face and you can't breathe and yeah. Great defense. Uh, we see Minescu with the disc. That's a good pull in these conditions from Minescu, something that she's been working on throughout the season. Dorb picks up the disc. We see straight away Rogue with a zone look here. Disc with Yong. She shoots. Oh, C! That is a huge bid from C! That's the kind of throw that Rogue would be looking for out of that junk. Murray Young had the power position there, but never really had the wide open receiver, certainly not with a flat throw like that. Isolated and now we cover in the lane. Chung, return serve. Here comes the read. Great read from Daub. She needed to grab that because Minescu was screaming behind looking for scraps. Throw Ooh, now. Throw. Oh, Murray Yong not able to keep it in. Bit of elevation there. Chung looks again. Oh! oh! Minj win! Just return serve there. The Minja! <laughs> that is incredible! It wow. is massive! She's about three foot tall! She and goes she's playing like she's throw. eight foot! Oh, 
Oh, wow. She's going to be a little bit disappointed with that, and I think interesting thing's going to be where that one came out. I, I don't think that it stayed in bounds for very long. And well. So we see Bella C striding back up the field. This is going to be great field position for Rogue. Bit of a squandered opportunity there for Chaos. Such a brilliant D from, from Min. Oh. Win, wow, but just not able to, con to consolidate there. That's an enormous play. That's a huge play. It's a shame the conservation of greatness has bitten her in the butt there. C with the disc. Oh. oh. Heavy contact. Rock under a little bit of contact. Minescu keeps it in. Wow. That throw just gets taken by the wind. Almost impossible to catch at that angle. And now it's Rogue who've squandered that opportunity. It was a tough chance, but it was a golden one. And if you're going to run with the best, you're going to have to pull off your tough chances. And we see now that Rogue have dropped out of that junk. Oh, no, they're playing a little bit of help. Deep. Oh, squeezes it through there to Mariong. Back now to Daub. Ning is there is a, a long lot way of free. there is a lot of pointing on the sideline to say hit those downfield targets. It was a two-on-one situation. Chaos have got all the numbers here, but Murray Yong holds it up, trying to be patient. Rogue able to recover and reset here. Back into their junk. Lamb on the mark. High stall count now. They get the reset there. Goodbye, Rogue. Recover their containment and hold up chaos because they had them broken, they had them split open. Wow, wow, we were a little bit blocked there with our sight, but I see Minescu on the ground. She has gone huge and completely. I see Ewan axed on herself. the ground. Did they did Minescu take out Ewan? No, Let's have I a think look at the just the replay. size of the bid is has hurt oh, a lot. Oh, yes. She's taken out Ewan on the roll through. But Rogue's got the result they needed, which is the turn. Let's hope it hasn't come at a cost of an injury to Ewan. Out of a horizontal now for Rogue. Minescu goes out against the shorter Huyn. And Huyn makes the play. Oh, wow. Ewan almost picked up the scraps there, but Win has just really been some huge height there. They're pointing again to that throw. Wow. He just didn't come back. Chaos he players on the sideline using the point. Insane throw gesturing it. madly to hit that, hit that shot up there as we see oh, Win Quinn, moving, the, leaving the field. She's bleeding from the nose at the moment. Yeah. She must have copped a, a hand or a something. She is bleeding profusely at the moment. Imagine they'll get Someone some pinch that nose for her. We've got to stop the bleed. Because they need her back out there. She has been a massive spark for them. And Rogue will reset into their horizontal. But they're on the sideline. I'm betting that Rock is going to play for position here. And I think Minescu is probably going to be the target. No, it makes a liar of me in field two. Chung to Deb Lee to Spella C. Straight into the middle now. And Minescu puts it back. Rogue working nicely across the width. We see that throw sitting up for a little bit, but Chung has acres of space there. And Ebony Taylor does not even need to lay out for that. She just picks it, on the it up. Chest. Back in field to Murray Yong. Rogue hold them up now. And that throw is a little bit off target to Chen. Another long point here. You feel like this point could have some serious impact on the game. And C gets it infield to Minescu. No mark on her at the moment. She's got plenty of times to survey her options. Chung with the disc. 
Looks long to Lamb. That's going to sail out, though. Again, similar throw to what we saw down the other end. The wind having an effect, just changing the shape of the disc flight path and pushing it out of bounds. In calm condition, I reckon that comes back in bounds right at that front cone. Absolutely. Day one, that's a score. But we're not on day one anymore. Paul Bella sees foot just so close to the line there. She's just managed to keep it in, hasn't she? She's, she's taken an injury sub as well. She's looking gassed. Rogue, a little slow to get back on D. Minescu comes through, but, Mo, but Murray Yong saying no, contact there. They're going to talk it over and figure out what's happening. Minescu looking to her teammates for some advice. Easy to clip the player there when you're when you're charging in on the disc. We're looking at an uncontested foul there. It's Murray on with the disc, but I think we're saying no. Violation. Violation on the position. Deb Lee with all the work to do in backfield here because she's got a couple of chaos players. They're able to contain it though, the rogue team. Infield, back to Murray Yong. She's such an excellent popper, Murray Yong. She just works that space behind the behind the cup and the fence very well. Well picked up there. Now the throw out wide again. Murray Yong keeps it in this time. Launches a throw. Oh, oh Minescu! Wow. She is so unlucky there. So unlucky. Looked like she had it covered. Someone go give her a hug and a high five because that play cannot go unrewarded. That bid. Ning just holds her position, waits for the disc to come into her hands, doesn't move. It's not common that a defensive, a missed defensive play gets more chops than the score, but that bid. That rogue would have to count themselves very unlucky there. But I think, you know, the work ethic of Murray Yong popping in and out of that cup, just giving them options, keeping the disc moving, it just means that the Rogue Passion team aren't able to set up their defence exactly the way they want to. They've got a lot of resources around the disc. They're really trying to keep everything in nice and tidy, but once it gets through there, you're generally looking at a two-on-one or a three-on-two situation, and that's what we saw there. Murray Yong just rips it. It's such a good point that you make, Kylie. The defense from Rogue Passion, it's making Chaos throw a lot of passes, but as you say, as soon as they're able to break that containment, they just, uh, they look nowhere near as strong. And I mean, that's, that's what you're looking for when you play those zones. You can't shut down everything. The zones are getting the throws that they want, but just not the results at the moment. And the wind is getting stronger. Vladimados picks that one up. Zalem's again is stretching out. And once again, we see that throw. <laughs> Kath O'Neill with a very ambitious bid. I love it. I love it. Sign me up some of that. <laughs> I hope that Kath O'Neill is uh, playing in the AUL. Because that... That is going to be great to watch. Oh, look, I suspect if she's got her name in there, in the draft, she's going to be picked up, and that's what Rogue wanted. The wind has really gusted up a little bit these last couple of minutes. Latimados now, Rogue with a short field to work with. Valancourt looks around, back to Latimados. Chaos doing a good job shutting down options. There's not a lot for Latimados. She's going to have to look for a reset. Or that. That's the kind of defense that Chaos is going to need to play on their line in that situation. You'd back Rogue to score that more times than not. Well, in that situation, they've only got 10, 15 yards to go, but no separation whatsoever across the field. Chaos covering all the receivers. 
Yeah. And in ultimate, that is the secret to creating blocks. If they've got no one to throw to, they've got to throw it away. Yeah, Rogue looking really spread across that end zone, which is not what they'll be trying to achieve. Valancourt, I like what she was trying to do, which was get it more across to the wider receivers, but the wind has just become a little bit more unfriendly. A couple of great grabs there from Chaos. So we see Yong with the disc. She's looking for Brereton, who always provides an option. Epstein. Oh, big D again by Bub. She is having a serious impact for this road team. What a great addition this season. A stellar game thus far. Defensively impossible. They can't get it to whoever Bub is covering. And she comes in isolation now. She's going to look to recycle that cut. Oh, I think Kath O'Neill keeps O'Neil's it in. in. Oh, same again by Ali Zalem's in the end zone. Well, there's some wow. things you can't teach, and athleticism is one of those. First, Kath O'Neill with excellent body control, keeping a toe down, and then Ali Zalem's in the end zone. As we see the uh, the block. Bub making the play, and then O'Neill with that throw, the last throw in the end zone. Feen in bounds. That's a score. They're just flirting with that sideline, though, aren't they? Aren't they working in such a small space? And you feel like it's probably not going to be a strategy that they can persist with through the whole game. Get a couple of points out of it, sure, and especially when you need to score some points. They needed that one. I'd love to see a heat map of disposition. It seems like it's always down the strong side. There's very little width in either offense at the moment. And the times that the team have found width, they've found scores. Yeah. And the wind now has really started to pick up quite significantly. It's blowing across towards the close sideline here. Uh, it's still easier to score as we're seeing from the, the end that Chaos is currently at. So I think, you know, the victor in this game is going to be the team that's able to get in a couple of scores up the other end. Haven't seen too much action there. Well, a little bit earlier in the game, but the wind has picked up significantly since then. We see a pull coming from Rock. That's another decent pull in these conditions. You can't ask for more than that. Rock providing. Rogue again in the in a junk. Chaos able to get it out to Lim. She moves it back inside to Huin, who's back on after that issue with the nose. And Daub sits it up. That's a lovely throw. That's an easy score for Hoskins there for Chaos. What an offensive play. Chaos down the field. 40 knot breeze be damned. They don't care. They are better than than that. They and won't look, hold them back. Massive props to Jerry Dobb there because she really held back on that throw. You could see as she's winding up, she just took a little bit off it, sat it up. There was a lot of space for for her to throw into. Hoskins holding a position really well, and you were not able to get there. Good to see Win back out there as well. You mentioned as she. Uh, has managed to staunch the bleeding from her nose. And Hoskins as well, shaking off her injury where she took heavy contact, lost a boot, slid off the field. <laughs> She's back there, that's great to see. Great to see. We see, uh, we see Rogue now with Edgar, a lot of chatting on the field. I'll be interested to see if they continue with the zone when they're on defense. Obviously, they're coming out on O now. Whether they might uh, move back to a match situation. Well, the single coverage has yielded results occasionally. The zone hasn't really made much of an appearance, which is surprising considering the wind. 
Yeah, I see. Talking about the wind, but we're also seeing some pretty decent storm clouds hovering close by. So we may be able to add a bit of rain to the mix in a minute. Well, they finally killed the disc. Good field position again for Rogue here. O'Neill with the disc. Moves it. Latimados now. Deb Lee just runs that down. And the float there in the disc from Latimados does big favours for Rogue and no favours at all for the Chaos Defender. Rogue will be pretty happy to tick that one off. Well, 6-5 the score. They're still within two. Hoskins. Well, I'm actually not sure 6-5 is the score. That was the score on the last point, so that'll make it 6-all. I think it is. I think that has been changed. I think it is 6-5. We'll get six confirmation five. on that. Okay. Well, here comes the rain. Wow. It is starting to come in now. And I love that we're seeing these conditions. This is the sort of stuff that really tests out the mental You're resilience saddest. of each team. You're a saddest, Kylie. It's, You're mean. <laughs> it's all very well to play Frisbee when it's lovely and warm <laughs> and your heart is full of sunshine. <laughs> But these are the conditions that we love to see. Let's see which players step up to the challenge. Well, so far, you'd have to say that Bob from Rogue Passion has answered the call. Absolutely. Deb Lee with the unenviable task of pulling into this now blustering wind. And you can see from that she's done all right with the roller because the conditions have just suddenly gotten awful. Jerry Daub with the disc, doesn't muck around with it, just straight up. Deb Lee, bit of a bobble. She's lost the hat, Deb Lee. She's getting serious. Chung picks up the disc. Jones now, back to Chung. Chaos, clever I think, playing a zone here. Really nice pick up there by Ewan. They're just looking for lots of little short passes at the moment. Every meter of possession, important, but that's just a little bit too tight. Quinn manages to get a hand in there. She's not going to muck around with it either. She just pops it back up and surprise, surprise, Deb Lee picks it up in the end zone. She had the we'll best start read there, again. Lee. Knew exactly what was coming, but she's in the coffin corner. She's in trouble. She's got to do something here. Sure. Stuck there. No options. And that little feed through to Minescu. I think we might have a call on that. Minescu now. Oh. It's really hard to be accurate with those tiny little passes. And we see Chaos score with some late contact from Minescu. That's unfortunate. Well, Laura Minescu is putting her all into this game. She wants to go to the semis. Looks like Lim is okay. Sharpen off the field. Bit of a hug, Minescu probably offering her apology there for that hit. It wouldn't have been an Australian AFL. Or even rugby union, maybe. Wow, we are getting some rain here now. You can see the rogue players on the line trying to keep their body language positive. Ruiz jumping up and down, trying to keep themselves warm. This is not the sunny state that we are expecting. Well, 
unless uh, unless we knew differently, you'd think we're in Melbourne. <laughs> think the change in weather. It was, was quite abrupt. startling, wasn't it? Well, it started with a bit of wind, which was all right. Yeah, we had a little shower this morning, but it looked like it had cleared up nicely. And weather forecast for today, I believe, was something in the vicinity of two to eight mils. And That's I feel like we're probably going to head definitely towards the the upper part of that bracket. Yeah. Well, there's the pool. Chaos. That is an amazing pull. I did not see who pulled that, but hats off to them because they've got themselves some excellent field position here in what is, as I say, terrible conditions. Chaos have decided to stay with this zone, which I think is smart. Lana Mardos. She's struggling. She is going to have to put that up. Play the field position. I think you have to do that in that situation. They cannot afford to give Chaos a short field turn in these conditions. Make them wait, work it all the way up the field. And as we see, immediately they get the disc back. Kath O'Neill walks in. A lot of Chaos players around the disc. And I think that's what O'Neill's saying now is maybe one or two too many. Murray Yong. Previously also played for Rogue back in the 2014 season, so she's great friends with a lot of these players. They know each other well. Still lots of happy smiles out there in this delightful weather. Oh! Well, Zalems not able to hold on to that. And we start again with Chaos right up in this corner. Good D again. Zalems gets it straight back, pretty keen to make up for that inability to hold onto the disc. Valancourt on the sideline. Rice, big mark. Oh, again, Zalems, she's not going to be happy with that. I know the conditions are tricky, but Ali Zalems, one of the star players of this rogue outfit. Well, she's gone two in a row there. And you wouldn't we have bet on it. Come up. Oh, that is great field position for Chaos. Latimados with the disc. Almost picked up. She's gone Almost on a foul. picked up by Boyle. See a bit of a discussion going on. That's popped up and gone straight to ground. All right, we see great grab there. Still lots of smiles out there, which is good to see. Valancourt looks for the reset to O'Neill. Good play, Zalem holds onto it this time. Oh, Boyle. Realized she was gonna have to launch for it, couldn't hold onto it, Qua with a disc. Nicely held there by Brereton. Looking for options. There's that IO flick again to DeLuca. Oh, good bid by, by O'Neill, but can't quite stop it. Now Chaos have got some movement there. That is a massive goal for Chaos. That is huge. In these conditions, in the context of the game, they will be very, very pleased with that one. So I think... We're looking now at a score of 8-5. I think we're taking us, I think that takes us to half. Not really sure. Looks like all the players are coming off. Yeah, that looks like half time. So we see the score being changed here and Rogue will be very disappointed with that. But for Chaos, what an amazing 
way to punctuate a great half. They're looking strong, Chaos. We're going to take a break for half time. I'll come back to you from the previously sunny Queensland in a few minutes.
Yeah. Water and electronics. They don't mix. Yeah, they mix, as it turns out. As it turns out, they are not great friends. It's like the electrician's corollary. Electri electrics run on smoke. They remove smoke. Electrics no longer work. Prove me wrong. <laughs> O'Brien, the second half of this women's quarterfinals. We're on the way. Ooh. That could have been a good early score for Chaos, but now I've given Rogue an opportunity and they really want to make the most of it here. But again, Chaos is able to kick them in this. Whoa. Wow. Chum <laughs> can't do anything but laugh there. That is the classic wet handed forehand release, which goes nowhere. Loved it completely. Chaos. I'm glad she sees the lighter side of it. Chaos. Yeah. I was just about to say, Chaos, the strategy of pinning Rogue down to this near sideline, keeping them in the corner, has been very effective so far. And for Chaos to be able to come out and score their offensive point quickly, that's going to be exactly what they were looking for coming out of half. And I'm sure that Brereton would have had some words with them about the importance of starting strong. Because this rogue team's not going to go away. But if you can keep, keep them out of the hunt, it just makes it a little bit harder for them to have that belief that they can, they can pull these points back and win the game. Rogue needs to respond here. They need to respond quickly. Molly Bellinfor, still all smiles on the sideline. Just having a fun time out there. Good game as well. So, in terms of the conditions, we've seen now with the rain really starting to ease off, that that wind has eased off as well. So it could end up being a completely different game in this second half as we see a pool well caught by Rock. Basically going as deep as it ever has. Rock again. Chaos sitting with the zone. She pops up a little hammer. Scuba to nobody. Qua picks it up. Sends it deep. And that is run on to very nicely. Really well picked up there by Woods. That could be a dagger. But we do have a call. That could be a dagger to the heart of Rogue Passion. We're having a chat whether she's in or out. We're not going to have a great view of it. We're on the far sideline. Yeah, so the question is just purely whether she's inbounds, because she's certainly in the end zone. Like uh, the discussion is whether she had control of it as she passed out of bounds. Yeah, and like you say, probably not going to get a great shot on that one. It is on the far sideline. Well, I mean, she definitely had control on the first grab, so the question is just whether she was in or out on that first grab. We're going to send it back. It's contested out. So a contested out call. The end result. Fair result, I think. Well, as we say, we can't tell what's happening from the sideline here. 
So it goes back to Kwa with the disc. Rogue is going to need to scramble here to stop this chaos machine just rolling in another point. Especially with the wind now having completely dropped. Yeah, Mario just pops it up. And that, that is a comfortable hold for chaos. Sorry, a, a comfortable break for chaos. They are out to a big lead now. It's gone from considerable to considerably large. Chaos straight out of half, two breaks. Yep. Five. I mean, look, if I'm Coach Edgar right now, I'm thinking the, the positive thing here is that the conditions have changed quite significantly. So that big, hard upwind down when we had in the first half doesn't really exist anymore. And the rogue, the rogue girls absolutely have the quality to be able to pin this back point at a time. The question is going to be whether they have the belief that they can do it and whether Chaos is going to start to feel any pressure if Rogue get a, a run on of a couple of points. But it's going to be a lot easier to score the end zone where Chaos is now. Um, but Chaos, they've got their tails up. They can sense a victory if they can just keep playing with the intensity they've been playing. As we see a pull going up from win. Well, we haven't seen a big comeback yet this tournament. We have seen time and again teams get out to a lead and then manage to keep the lead. And no team yet has managed to make the comeback. Rogue Passion, the quality and talent is definitely there. It's just a question of if or not they can pull it off. Valen Valencourt dances through the cup. Gosh, Chung was towing the line close there. I'm surprised there wasn't a check feet call. They keep going. Bub doing a nice job, but still they're working just down this space in the field. I think at this point, though, Rogue would take a score. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Bub! They'll take a score anyway they can get it. They peg one back, as we talked about, a point up this, this end of the field. Apart from Chaos's one right before half, first one we've seen in a while. It's the start of a quite a long road for Rogue, but at least they've taken the first step. Well, every big journey starts with a step, and Very off they true, go. Very true, Dan. We heard some sirens earlier. I'm assuming that's the cliche police. They haven't found me yet. So <laughs> I'm going to keep uh, motoring on with every cliche I can think of. Door probably as surprised as I was. That, uh, that disc here got thrown, and... Well, it breezed past her hands. And Bub, how fitting is it, Bub, scoring the point there? Yeah, I think that the, the, the experienced players on the Rogue team, and Bub, even though she's a first-year player for Rogue, she plays with Nightlock over in the US. She's got oodles of experience, and she's really showing her, her quality here. These girls are all going to need to play very well. We know we've got the, they've got the talent to do it. Can they string it together in a in what's going to be a high pressure second half for them? We've had to bring in our second camera. It was uh, shorting out a little bit on the sideline. Minescu with the pull brings it in. It'll be interesting to see what defensive look the rogue team come out with. Brereton on the disc. Good pressure from Rogue here. This is I a little saw. bit like what we saw. And again, we see that Rogue forehand come out. Bit Flubbed of it. slippery. O'Neill finds Perkins with a fast closing Brereton. Oh, Minescu. Oh, Minescu. They wouldn't they love to have iced that one. MJ Rigby picks up the disc and a nice short turn for Rogue. Let's see how we look. Oh, Perkins picks up the disc. Not a lot in front of her, but Branda Lamb, clever, clever cut from Lamb, opens it up. Yeah, exploiting. Rogue get a couple of quick ones. Exploiting DeLuca there, who got lost. Lost Lamb for a moment. Got turned around, was disc watching, and as she was di distracted, the score is thrown. Well, as we talked about, very different conditions in this second half. The wind has 
just dropped significantly now. It's almost like we had to weather that storm. We don't have bright sunshine, but we certainly have no rain at the moment. And we have... Very little wind. Yeah, wind that has died down remarkably compared to what we saw just before half. It's almost perfect frisbee conditions now with that squall blowing over. A yeah. little bit of uh, wetness on the grass. Just make those layouts a little bit nicer. Slide yeah. a little bit more. Still going to cause a little bit of havoc with the handling of the disc, though. So we've seen that already. We've seen from one from each side errant forehands that have just slid out the side. See a nice pull there from Lee. Door with the disc. She launches it early. Deb Lee says, thank you very much. Oh, well picked up by Chung. She sees Zalems. Oh, Valancourt jumps in first. Now Zalems. Wow, what a quick turnaround from Rogue. Three points in the space of about six minutes. Oh, they're back in the game. They are back in the game well and truly. And Zalems with great timing, peeling off, coming to the open side for the final throw. And you can see that once Rogue can break out and play with a little bit more offensive freedom, they've got talent to burn. But Chaos has done a great job of just pinning them on this sideline. And maybe this change in conditions is exactly what Rogue needed to give themselves a chance of getting back into this game. Because you looked after half, we saw Chaos come out score the first two after half and take that 10-5 lead and, you th lead and you thought, whoa, is it, is it curtains for the road girls? But bang, just like that, they responded with three quick ones. A little bit more spring in the step now. O'Neill with the pull. Well, indeed, the road girls have left the stage director scrambling to lift the curtains back up as he prepared to drop them. <laughs> and Dorp Kath O'Neill. With a turn, O'Neill picks it up. Oh, they're on oh, a roll now. Wow! Georgia, you would like that one. Oh, and that's within one now. Wow. Look, I'm loving to see that the body language of Chaos is still really positive. They're still all running back down towards the line, but. How oh. much does momentum matter? That's four in a row. Four. That is an impressive turnaround from Rogan. They have just taken this change in conditions and they have absolutely lapped it up. And could we be seeing the big comeback that we've been expecting all tournament finally be completed by Rogue Passion? Well, back to one now. And that's the tightest we've seen it for a while. I think Rogue will have the confidence that they can run them down, but Chaos just need to punch in one or two to re-establish their position in the game. Strong line on for Chaos. See if Rogue stays with the same defense we've seen the last couple of points. Oh, whoa. Oh, that, that is very unfortunate contact there. That's a huge hit. She is sore as well. I didn't even see it. What happened? It looked like we just had two players that weren't, just weren't paying attention to each other. One running down, looking at where the disc was coming in. The other running down to establish offensive position, and they have connected at pace. I think she's very rubbing. happy to see Singh walk off the field. She's rubbing various body parts. Her shoulder, the size of her face. Looks like she's okay, though, which is good. Meanwhile, Murray Yong picks up the disc to Luca. Murray Yong again, opening it up. DeLuca again. Little one twos and just can't connect on that final throw. So 
Rogue given their first sniff to even it up for the first point in a very long time in this game. See Chung with the disc. This is another opportunity for Rogue though. If they go 10 all here, you fancy them a better than even chance, especially with Minescu out there making plays like that. Yeah, that was a good pick up from her. Nez Ruiz, one of the speedsters on this team, fresh off an under 24s campaign. Zalem's one of her teammates, and Chung, another under 24s player. Looks like she's had a foot trot on there. She's going to take an injury sub. Well, that's the second in the point. One we from see. one from Chaos, one from Rogue. Yeah. And, and we see her under 24s teammate O'Neill take the field. Lots of stingrays here. Playing with the Rogue team. I think the number was seven. Oh, and a block, oh, Epstein. Good block from Epstein. A little too high there for Lee. Well snatched by DeLuca and Chaos through Murray Yong, one of their stars, just push that lead back out to two. It doesn't feel like they're safe yet, but every time they can just hold off that fast closing rogue, they're gonna be happy. Well, they've just given up four in a row. They are never gonna be safe in this game. Rogue, they've just shown they can do it. And Chaos, they better get their running shoes on because this Rogue Passion team is going to chase them all the way to the fishing line. They really are, and the important thing for Rogue is to make sure of those offensive starts because 11-9, there's not a huge number of points left in the game. They don't want to be chasing a three or four point break again close to the end, so. They'd be pretty keen to consolidate here. Score preferably a nice, easy offensive point. As we see a great grab there, the replay. DeLuca did well there to snatch that because that was heading away from her. You could see that going straight through her fingers and yep. onto the turf. Quick grab, Ellie Murray Yong in exactly the right position. As we see Geo Rock picking up the disc. Infield to Valancourt. Chaos, back to their match D. Boyle puts it oh, out. She's laying it out there. Oh, Wang works hard, but just can't reel that in. Put under big pressure there by the throw of Boyle. So Chaos yeah, going offense. Yeah, we see the nice wide throw out there. Yong with a disc. Throws it out to Kwa. She says, cut under. Cut under already. Good pressure defense again. Nicely picked up by Brereton. She's very strong in the air. She's looking for that inside. Rock does enough. No touch on it, but she does enough to get in the eye line of Rigby. As we see, everything pours while Hewan does up a shoelace. O'Neill with the disc. Well played to Ewan. She's, oh, Flubbed the curse it. of the wet flick strikes again. Flubbings abound. You could see what Ewan wanted. She wanted that big fat side throw to Perkins, who was in great position, but the, the moisture on the disc still causing some problems. Chaos again telling the teammates to send it. But they're working it short. Good switch there between Perkins and Valancourt. Nice pick up by Rigby. She pops it out. Good pressure on the throw there, uh, on the receiver there from Ewan, who just does, goes for a little run. And Kath O'Neill spots the opportunity early. Rogue keep that score to within one. Zero mercy, seeing still on the ground. Kath O'Neill goes fast as Ewan breaks through the end zone. A lot of space back there, and 
Kath O'Neill puts up a very, very good throw. A nice, easy regulation catch. Bringing it with it back within one, 11 10 the score. Chaos still in front. Yeah. Who's going to win? I... Who, who do you think wins this game? My money's on Rogue. If you'd asked me the same question at 10 5, I would have given <laughs> you a different answer. <laughs> but this change in conditions. It seems to have suited the Rogue girls perfectly. I, I think the main reason that I say that is the. The um, Chaos team has looked so effective when they've put that hard zone onto Rogue and pinned them on this sideline. I'd actually like them to see if they can still do that, even though the conditions have become a lot easier to manage. Because as we've seen the last few points, once you give Rogue a little bit of space to move, they're really going to rip you apart. So, But Chaos will be looking to prove me wrong. Unfortunate there from Murray Yong. She had some Alums riding right on her back. Chun with the disc. Hits Lamb in the middle of the field. Oh, oh wow. Murray Yong. Murray Yong to Zalams and again. We see O'Callaghan and they're trying to do the same now. Streak long. Daub with the disc. Ruiz doing everything she can to stop that launch, but it goes anyway, and it just keeps going. It's fascinating to watch. As soon as uh, Chaos is getting that disc with the handlers, all of their teammates on the sideline screaming for them to send it deep. They want to play that possession game. Oh, I mean, Min Win. Min Win has really... <laughs> Put her body on the line there. Yeah, so it looks like Lee's indicating she's felt some contact. It you can see the like replay there. Had inside position there. I suspect that one. It's going to be a retracted call. Yeah, retracted call. Good to see. Had a chat about it. And there's nothing wrong with discussing it over. Getting uh, the perspective of your opponent, what they saw, what they felt, yep. comparing that against what you saw and what you felt, and yep. then making a decision on, on what you feel is, uh, is accurate. Chaos. And now we see Chaos right on the brink of getting that two-point lead, a big fake from Murray Yong. Have a pick on the field. That was some great fakes there from Murray Yong. Chung desperate to stop that final pass going into the end zone. She was moving all around the mark. Yeah, Murray Yong with a distinct height advantage. Sold some candy and Chung was buying. It's back in. Oh! Well done, Brenda Lamb and Deb Lee as well. Two of them in the space. Going to be, oh, I thought that was going to be picked up by Jones, but no, Chaos get the disc back again. Daub, familiar side of her, and win with the disc in hand. You sense the score is coming. Daub, oh! Not if Eunice Chung has anything to do with it. That was a massive block in the context of the game. And oh. it's just a massive block anyway, you slice or dice it. That was humongous. Deb Lee, unhappy with the option she's seeing in front of her. Pops it up now to Jones, but we've got a stoppage. I want to see that, that layout, D, again. It seemed like it was almost blind that she just felt the throw come rather she than see went it. went into that lane with some sting. So it looks like it'll go back here. Murray yep. Yong will tap it in for Chaos. Deb Lee was looking non plus with the option she was given from her teammates. Nicely picked up by Zalems. She looks initially downfield. Oh, just too low for Bub to pick up. And Huynh's back with the disc. See if Chaos looked to punt it 
or if they're going to play out of the position they're in right now. Lynn with the disc, sends it wide. Oh, Daub just not able to hang on to that one, slightly over her head. Looks like she lost sight of it a little bit. Well, and still with the wet this conditions. Point, this point seems to be the one where this game is going to be won or lost. Ruiz with the disc. Lamb. Another call. I think Bub realised she was causing the pick there as she commenced a cut and pulled out pretty quickly. Nothing wrong with a bit of a rub route. Pick and roll. Yeah. Depending on what sport you play. Back in again. And JJ, Jess Jones, evens it up for Roke. What a game. Well, what for, a game. For 90 minutes, Roke Passion have just been making up the numbers, hanging around. They've never really been in it. Not since uh, Chaos put on that massive run in the first half. Then they put four in a row together. And now they score to level it up. I've just I think been. I'm starting to believe, Kylie. I think I'm starting to believe that Rogue Passion are going to win, even though they look so incredibly unlikely through the middle of this game. Oh. Look, there's plenty of game to be played yet, Dan. But yeah, but I I, think... I'm part of the media. I sensationalise. <laughs> I'll, I'll say things that are outrageous, but it's not so outrageous to say that Rogue might win this one. No, you're right. And look, that point could end up being the turning point of the game, I think. Simonescu with the pull. It's got some good distance on it. Forced to let it drop is Qua. Sends it back now to DeLuca. Oh! Laura, oh, this cannot happen. That is a short turn for Rogue. Can they take advantage? Perkins pops it up. Oh, it just had a fading edge on it. Not if, enough for Ewan to be able to hit. If Again, chaos, we see DeLuca with it. If Chaos give up another break here, you sense that this might just break their back and their spirits. And that is the short turn off the hand of Epstein. Rogue, slow it down a little bit now, which I think is probably sensible. Chung's looking for her options. Sees Minescu. Keeps it in Rogue. Rogue, take the lead for the first time in this game. And what an important time for them to take the lead. And you can see the high fives are in abundance. Disbelief. Chaos fans will be holding their heads in their hands in shock, in horror. This can't happen. They cannot be down in this game, but they are. It's 12-11. Wow. I, we just have to go Eight, back. Three and a half. We have to go back and talk about that change in fortune with the weather. After half, it was still horrendous. The rain was bucketing down. We had huge gale force winds. Then it passed. And it was like... I really... It was I, like being born anew for the Rogue Passion Girls, wasn't it? I think the weather certainly a big part, but also the Rogue Passion ladies' play has been amazing. Nothing short of miraculous layout blocks, layout catches, big throws. It's all happening and it's starting to come together for them at the perfect time. Yeah. Not over yet, though. They need to keep pushing hard. As we see, Quinn with the disc, looking for options. Door provides one. The defense levels have increased. And Deb Lee, Deb Lee makes sure of that one. Another great field position for Rogue. Oh, they the really game. want to be capitalising from here. Chaos, uh, this game is slipping from their grasp. They had it in a headlock for most of it. And all of a sudden, Rogue Passion has slipped the submission hold. And it on top with some grounded pound. Jess Jones provides a great option there to Zalems. She's looking for cuts. 
Bub working hard, but covered well by Daub. Lee, casual as you like. She's looking. It's still up. Perkins! Perkins takes a great grab. Unlucky for the Chaos Girls there. They had position. They got the D, but the bobble. Oh, how often does the bobble kill you? You think you've got the D. That is really unfortunate there for the Chaos Girls. But Rogue roll on with another point. And this suddenly... This game's over. Suddenly, we are at 13-11. It's done. We're done. Oh, it's never done, Dan. Like, the words chaos, it's done are said by people. If chaos come back into this, I'm going to have a heart attack. There's the words I'm going to pop done. an artery and <laughs> may, maybe pass out from an aneurysm. The words it's done <laughs> are the last words said by people who snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. Uh, Chaos will not be thinking like that. They will be thinking that they just need to get this next point and get themselves back in the game. Something we haven't mentioned, Bella C carrying an ankle injury. She has cleats off. She's on the sideline. So that's a big loss for Rogue Passion, but they've managed to uh, get on without her and they are putting together the second half of the season at the moment. 8-3 at half. They have scored so many points. Oh, and again, Rogue has the disc up in the air. Plenty of people having a bid with it. Chung says, let's just go deep. It's worked well so far. Boyle takes it. Rogue are up 14-11. It's done. Let's go home. Let's go have a coffee. It's cold. <laughs> this is incredible. Chaos. It's almost like they, they jumped on the bus. They were already headed to the semi-finals thinking the game had been won and Rogue Passion again. Nah, hang on. We uh Well it's gonna be Mr. a special <laughs> it's gonna be a special comeback from here for Chaos. Well, it's been a special comeback for Rogue Passion. We haven't seen a team manage to do it. All weekend, team who takes half wins the game. And it's been like clockwork, it's been predictable, and rogue passion or anything but the X factor for the team from Sydney has been the deciding factor, I think, in this game. Because at 14-11, a huge run of points. 11 this half. 11 points to Chaos's three. No, I think it was 8-5 at half, wasn't it? Or am I wrong? 8-3. Was it? I, I, think it? I think it was 8-5. But I, I'm happy to be corrected. Well, so am I. But still, that's... Uh, Let's see what happens Nine here. Points. Chaos with a must-score point to keep themselves in this quarterfinal. I see Kwa with a disc. Oh, sorry, Lin with a disc. Oh. And isn't that wow, indicative? Wow, first pass turn. That tells the story. O'Neill, disc for Rogue. High. Bub. Gosh, she has been solid all game. Absolutely stellar. Manescu, toes the line. She in? Yep. Everyone's happy with that. They're still playing in this small space here. Zalems just outside the end zone. Looks a free off. Player there. Looks off Jess Jones. Back with Perkins. She's holding on to it. Ruiz catch, but I think we have a I think we have a call there. Yeah, Everyone had stopped. It looks like a foul call. Foul call. Okay. Maybe Epstein's called that. Maybe potentially there's been a bit of contact contact from Ruiz to get open there. Perkins really wanted to send it back inside, but she just couldn't see anything to offer there. Rogers worked it all the way down the field in this narrow channel on the side. One pass, Kylie. One pass and you're off to the semis. One pass or 20. <laughs> One pass and turn it over. Oh, just would have loved to see them put it back inside and use the width of that field to score. The road girls will know how I feel about that. But we see Win with the disc. She has been a warrior today. She has been, but a lot of pressure from this position. 
dried blood still on her face from the knock she took. Layout D's, Sky, she's done everything she can. I see her looking. Big shot up. But a nothing option, Kylie. Chaos, their offense is. I think they were just very all. nervous about turning it over within a meter or two of their end zone line, which is just not how they played the rest of this game. A little bit of self-doubt creeping in there now as we see O'Neill once again in a pretty similar position. Rowe looking isolation. to ice it. To Zalems. Back to O'Neill. Oh, Min has oh, got a big piece no of it. no way. Bub picks that up again. If they score this point, they need to be saying a big thank you to her. Minescu picks that up. Not sure it's intended for her. Now they come wide. Wide, wide, wide. Yes. They're, they're going. They're off Ruiz. to the semis. It's a miracle run. That it's a fairy tale. Is unbelievable. We talked about them using the with Dan, and they've come in strong. The fairy tale comeback. Oh, Chaos are just going to be so disappointed. They really just had that game to win, didn't they? Well, it was their game to lose, and lose it they did. And early, they got to the end of the rainbow. Chaos found the leprechaun. Chaos pinched his pot of gold. We're back to this again. <laughs> Chaos ran to the shops. <laughs> they, Chaos bought the unicorn. <laughs> and they rode the unicorn out to an early lead. Well, Rogue Passion, they've found the unicorn. They've hey. pitched the unicorn back. <laughs> they've rode the unicorn back to the leprechaun. They've returned it <laughs> to the leprechaun. And they've said, leprechaun, give us a magic lamp. They've got a magic lamp. They've run the magic lamp. And they've asked... For one wish and one wish only, and that was a massive second half, which they have turned in the performance of the season. Rogue passion. I'm a believer. Sign me up. Where, where do I order? I'm very pleased to hear this, Dan. Where, where do I order my rogue passion shirt? I want one. Wow. That is a fantastic performance. We're going to leave it here after that fantastic game between the two, and we're moving to the next time slot. Semi-final time for the divisions. TV.